So with the return of baseball, I've got my Yankees tie on. I figured now would be the perfect time to do a video on Bernoulli's principle. The Magnus effect, which is a special case of Bernoulli's, explains why curveballs curve, and is a great example of how you will see Bernoulli's tested on the MCAT. So to start off, here's the equation. P, the static pressure, plus one-half rho v squared, the dynamic pressure, and that's not a lowercase p, it's the Greek letter rho, which stands for density, and when talking about Bernoulli's, we mean the density of the fluid, plus rho g h equals k, equals a constant. So just looking at this equation, two of the terms should look familiar to you. One-half rho v squared looks like the formula for kinetic energy, and rho g h looks like the formula for potential energy. This should, combined with the fact that the equation equals a constant, tell you that Bernoulli's is more or less an expression of conservation of energy. Now on the MCAT, one of these three terms won't be changed, or the change will be so small as to be negligible, so you can just ignore it, and it's usually rho gh. And this makes things nice and easy. It makes Bernoulli's questions just like your run-of-the-mill conservation of energy questions. As a cliff diver jumps off, his potential energy is decreasing and kinetic energy is increasing, but his overall energy is remaining constant. As one goes up, the other goes down, and vice versa. It's the same with Bernoulli's. As the velocity of the fluid increases, the pressure decreases. As the velocity decreases, the pressure increases. That's how you will see it. You're not really going to be asked to calculate anything based on the, this equation. It's more of a, how does one term change with respect to another topic? And remember, we're always talking about laminar flow, non-viscous fluids, unless stated otherwise. So on to the baseball example. So we have a righty pitcher throwing a breaking ball, and I've drawn it so that your point of view is from above the ball as it travels to the plate, which means it will have kind of a clockwise spin. I'll be referring to the top side and bottom side of the ball as I've drawn it, but just keep in mind that top corresponds to left and bottom to right from the point of view of the pitcher. So as it travels through the air, it passes through these laminar fluid lines, and obviously there are many more of them, but you get the same idea without all the clutter as I've drawn it. So the air is flowing on either side of the ball. Based on how the ball is spinning, the air will be traveling faster on the top side as the tangential velocity of the ball is in the same direction as the fluid's movement. It's just the opposite on the bottom side. The tangential velocity of the ball is counter to the direction of the air, which causes the fluid to have a lower velocity there. Now that we've established that, we can determine what happens to the pressure of the fluid in these two spots. As one goes up, the other goes down, and vice versa, so that gives us lower pressure on top of the ball, and higher pressure on the bottom. Now, pressure always goes from high to low, which results in a force towards the top of the ball. From the point of view of the ready pitcher, the ball breaks to the left, and this is why. So that's the Magnus effect, a special case of Bernoulli's. Another example that you see all the time is dealing with flight. So, if you thought my baseball was poorly drawn, I don't even want to know what you think about my plane wing here. Uh, anyway, flight in real life is more complicated than you'll see it on the MCAT. There are Newtonian forces in play, there's something called the Coanda effect, which is the tendency of fluids to veer toward an object, but on the MCAT, Bernoulli's is all you need. So, as you can see, the air flows over the top and bottom of the wing, and this is a cross-sectional profile view of the wing. The line in the middle is to show the asymmetry between the top and bottom of the wing, something called camber, and this is responsible for generating the lift. The camber causes the fluid above the wing to move faster than the fluid below it. This in turn causes lower pressure above the wing and higher pressure below it. As one goes up, the other goes down, and just like with our baseball example, and just intuitively, this causes a force upwards from high pressure to low, allowing the plane to fly. So the last example here is something you see all the time on the MCAT, which is combining Bernoulli's with the continuity equation, giving you something called the Venturi effect. The continuity equation, as you'll recall, is A1V1 equals A2V2. Basically this equation says that volume flux remains constant, so if you change the cross-sectional area of a tube, then the speed of the water flowing through it will change as well. Larger area means the velocity decreases, smaller area means the velocity increases. This is why when you put your thumb over a garden hose, the water starts spraying out much faster. You've decreased the cross-sectional area through which the water is flowing, so it sprays out at a greater velocity. So the continuity equation is itself another example of one term going up and another one going down. 
So this is the classic example of the Venturi effect that I'll discuss. Uh, in this device, water is flowing from left to right with three tubes open to the atmosphere, each occurring in a distinct section of the device. The question is, how does the height of the water in each of these tubes compare? So if you get a problem like this on the MCAT, first start with the continuity equation part and determine the relative flow speeds. On the left, we'll call the speed fast, the middle will be called faster, and the right, the skinniest part, will be called fastest. As the cross-sectional area decreases, the flow speed increases. That's all from the continuity equation. Nice and simple. Okay, well now that we have the relative velocities, we can determine relative pressures from Bernoulli's, which is all you need to determine how high the water will get in the tube. The higher the pressure, the higher the water column. That gives us this effect. The tube on the left has the highest pressure and therefore the highest column because the water is moving the slowest there. Now here are a couple questions. Go ahead and pause the video here while you work on them as the answer slide will appear in about five seconds, so pause it now. And here are the answers. If you have any questions as to why certain choices are wrong or why a certain choice is the correct one, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. And as always, Pause the video again here if you'd like more time to review the answers. So that was Bernoulli's. You'll probably be given the equation on the test. It's not one that you're expected to remember, like F equals MA, and it will probably be written a little bit differently than I have in this video. Uh, for instance, H in rho GH will be written as Z. So just be aware of that. And remember, Bernoulli's is tested just like conservation of energy on the MCAT. As one term goes up, another one goes down.